Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Graham Slad. I'm a Copyright Outreach Librarian in the Scholarly Communications and Copyright Office at U of T. And my colleague and graduate student, Samantha Elmsley, uh, couldn't be here for happy reasons. Um, and she did, she's done most of the labor on this project, so I just wanted to acknowledge her uh, lack of presence on the stage today. Um, when I started doing these slides, I realized I'd produced a very verbose title. So in response to that, I produced an alternate title, <laughs> um, Looking the Gift Horse in the Mouth. And I'll know if I haven't gone to the horse at the two minute, two minute mark uh, to speed up. So this is sort of another story from the trenches of uh, green open access. Um, it's about a project that's been running at U of T since 2015 in collaboration with the Faculty of Social Work uh, to create a uh, open access collection of, of faculty scholarship, which would be hosted in uh, U of T's repository T space. The project grew out of the Faculty of Social Work's academic plan, which was written in 2011, and in 2015 they realized they hadn't really done anything about the first pillar of their academic plan, which was establish an infrastructure to develop and take the lead in knowledge mobilization in social work. So uh, they got together and um, created a memor memorandum of agreement with the library to uh, basically hire the library's copyright office to do copyright clearance on their faculty's research and ingest it into the repository. And they did this in kind of an atypical way. Uh, the estate, just in keeping with this kind of the, uh, a sub-theme of this conference, which seems to have been dead people, um, the, 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 the estate of a rich alumnus had, had donated money to, to the faculty, and it's with this money that they secured the funding to support the ingest, ingestion into the open access repository. And social work, uh, the social work, I should say the social work uh, faculty has a strong research profile in global public health, so it, it sort of fits um, open access quite, quite well. One thing, thank you, the horse needs to be coming up pretty soon. Uh, just one aside, um, dealing with a sort of informal philanthropic uh, relationship has its challenges. Um, my colleague uh, Maria, who's in the audience, has received a phone call from the children of uh, the estate, the, who, the person who, who the library is named after, just inquiring about the project. So, moving on. The project structure is sort of that the model is embedding to embed the green open access um, ingestion into the faculty. So, we work closely with the research officer. We're working on in, uh, putting buttons, open access buttons, into the faculty bibliography pages. Um, and uh, doing sort of more flashy attention economy stuff on the actual uh, Faculty of Social Works website rather than in the repository itself, which we all know can be fairly plain. Seen here. Um, so it's, it's sort of like a typical faculty bib project, but with some added Skullcom literacy to the faculty and communications, which we'll get to at the end. So, so far, so good. And we've managed to secure more funding, and it's now sort of an endowed position in the library that will support the ingestion of social work scholarship permanently on an ongoing basis. Um, so here's the horse part. So this is great, but um, when, when we're looking at expanding it, making it permanent, we sort of have to do a environmental scan of what are the faculty members in the, fa in the, so in the social work faculty actually doing. And there's a fairly small group of them, so we can actually do this manually. There are 31 of them, and we notice right away that 16 of them are active users of ResearchGate. And these 16 users had uploaded a total of 458 full text articles into ResearchGate. And 313 of these infringe co copyright or the policies of uh, the publishers that, w that sort of, as green open access trench workers, um, we're, we enforce. So that's a copyright infringement rate of about 69%. It's sort of in keeping with some of the uh, recent studies um, that have looked into research gate usage by, by researchers. So then I sort of start, start to ask myself, what are we doing exactly? Are we just sort of a copyright enforcement arm of Taylor and Francis, which happens to publish all of the big journals in the field of social work? Um, what can we do to sign of, kind of create some, create some other value aside from doing this work? And what can, we also, what can we also do instead of being sort of copyright enforcement agents when we're, when we're reaching out to faculty, what can we do to kind of change this conversation more towards the themes of this, this conference about ownership, about participation, and about social justice? So with this 
amazing gift, what we're going to start focusing on is sort of the communication piece, which I put two asterisks uh, beside earlier in the talk. So what that's going to mean is sort of videos of faculty talking about their work for, to start with. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to come right up to the microphones. We've heard a couple of the presentations that we're talking about copyright and either how it's not clear or how we're infringing it. And about a year or so ago, I uh, heard a presentation by Brewster Kale of the Internet Archive, whose approach to copyright was, well, let's just put it up and see what happens. You know, the legal advice he got, bad things will happen. <laughs> but as he pointed out, invariably, nothing much happened. And in the few rare cases where something did, they took the material off right away and the problem was largely solved. And I do sympathize. Trying to trace down those, uh, you know, incorrect or incomplete copyright statements is a lot of work. But what if we shifted the focus a bit and did it more as a risk assessment and decided, so like, what is going to happen possibly if we put some things up in the copyright around them is kind of murky. So I know a couple of you addressed that topic. I'd just be interested to hear your comments on, on that as a strategy. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, I, I think about that a lot. And there are collections that we've brought into our repository that are where the copyright's feeling unclear, or we know we're taking a risk when we're doing that. Um, but I, in, it's interesting, um, the interplay between uh, you know, taking those sorts of risks and thinking about what you're, like who are you representing when you're assuming those risks? Like am I re assuming risk on behalf of my university when I'm doing that? Who do I need to ask permission of to assume a risk like that? Like it's, it's we have like these workflows for processing those CVs and it's just really hard to like adjust our workflows um, to account for sort of like the apparently infinite ways that people express copyright in different ways. Um, somebody tweeted that rightstatement.org might be a helpful framework to think about in all of this, and we're definitely looking at rightstatement.org as a potentially helpful um, framework to use with RIR that might, yes, help us just, just get those materials in without fussing around so much with that. Uh, just to say something a bit more about um, ResearchGate, um, just in light of the, the things that have been in the news recently, um, publishers don't seem to have an interest in enforcing their policies on, on a site like ResearchGate. Um, and they don't seem to have an interest on, in, you know, in special cases, enforcing their policies on institutional repositories either. So there, I think there is value in a risk assessment framework. Um, but I think, especially the, the project I'm talking about, where the, the faculty members are all publishing in, in um, sort of commercial, commercially owned journals, they've already given up um, ownership of, of, in most cases, of, of their work. And they're much more inclined to participate in the, the uh, sort of the economy of attention rather than the sort of things that IRs are really good at, which is processing information, making things available. There's, there's other things that have, you know, there are other pieces of the puzzle that they put, they're more attuned to that, um, you know, they, they, they're willing to overlook some other aspects that we think are important. I just want to add that um, we in Latin America, especially in journals, uh, I think it, uh, copyright and permissions is a, is a pending task because we always say that Latin America is open and open access and that, but uh, actually uh, since my experience with editors, some, much of, m many of them are, are not aware about permissions and they for example, put license like CC BY or, or another Creative Commons license, but are not sure what they are stating. So I think it's a very pending task. And, and, and again, the, how can we solve this is training and, and knowing more about it.
The, uh, the landscape does vary by institution, and if you are functioning in a, in a higher risk, perhaps a more litigious landscape, then, <laughs> then, then practicing due diligence and being able to show that with every item that you've deposited in the repository may be prudent. Did we have another question? I'd like some clarification. I have, I have a, a ResearchGate account, which ResearchGate made for me. I have never deposited anything there in my life. Every once in a while, they notify me that they found another full, um, another full text of some article of mine, and they've put it on. You know, I have not done a thing about this whole profile. Every once in a while, they ask me, am I really the author of this article? Well, I am, and so I say yes. That's, that is my entire participation in this process. Am I supposed to be going through and see if they've stolen these things from someplace and, 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 and tell them to take it off? What, what is my responsibility here? Um, I initially had that one of those emails in my slides. <laughs> like, like it said, Graham, is this you? And you click on it. So, so in some ways, yes, their, their, their business model is kind of a spam. Um, <laughs> spam model, um, but it's a good question. I, I mean, in the research that we did of, of the social work faculty, about three-fourths of the material ha actually had been uploaded by our faculty members. Um, about a quarter of it had been uploaded by faculty members at other institutions, and, these, and our faculty members were co-authors. And so I'm not sure if uh, some of your material is a co-authored work that someone else may have made available. But I know ResearchGate um, you know, their data processing, um, bibliographic data processing, they may just have pegged, pinged you monthly or something like that with something that's in their database. It's easy, you know, you go onto Google, you ask how many papers did I do, and then if you want to, you just go and look for them and, and grab them from places and stick them on my profile. You know, it, it wouldn't be hard to put there a lot of illegal things um, without ever asking me. Do we have any more questions for our speakers this afternoon? Alrighty, well, thank you again to everybody for your great talks. <laughs>